Hey, what's up everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so I figured I'd do a little talking about the NBA. I was just listening to Kenny Beecham talking about the Dallas Mavericks and uh, kind of inspired me to kind of give a little bit of chat to them and maybe see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, the thing that I want to say about the Dallas Mavericks right now is the same thing I've been saying about the Dallas Mavericks for the last year, which is the Dallas Mavericks are a team that doesn't have an interior presence. When you put... Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic together, you got to understand that that right there means that they're going to be needing defensive help. Those are two non-defensive players that are going to be on the floor a good majority of the time who also need the ball, So, which means your offense is going to have some continuity issues until they figure out how to play with one another, which can take time. In fact, lots of it, given the fact that the styles of play that they have are similar. ISO gods, basically. You know, stand around and watch them do their thing kind of guys. And then no defense on the other side. They need a team like Cleveland around them. <clears throat> Stilts, Allen, Mobley, Okoro, Ben, Luka, and Kyrie. Now you got a squad that can have the weak side help, all the rebounding stuff that we always talk about, all the defensive stuff necessary to make it so that core can figure themselves out and not have so much responsibility on the other end. What the Dallas Mavericks got going on is literally the opposite lo opposite of that. They have no interior presence. <laughs> Their center position is occupied by a guy that's a, a Dallas Maverick lifer. They're trying to turn him into Nick Collison, I swear to God. So it's one of those situations where it's like, all right, fine. Y'all want to do uh, that. You have to play JaVale McGee. Now, I don't know where he is in, 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 in his career. He might be a little past his prime at this point. I don't know. Last time we saw him, he was great for us. The Lakers won a championship with us in 2020. <laughs> Three years later, I don't know what's there. But what I can say is they had better use him because that is what's ultimately hurting them. They are not respecting the fact that they need a center. They went up against the Charlotte Hornets for the last two games. Charlotte Hornets beat them both of those games. I didn't see no highlights. But I can tell you what I know the Charlotte Hornets have. Maybe those guys were on the floor. Maybe that was the problem. Williams. Richards. These are real centers, man. Real NBA centers. Guys with massive bodies who bang and have been banging probably since they were eight years old. They do not have any trouble pushing Dwight Powell and Christian Wood out of the way. <laughs> no problem at all. The move that the Dallas Mavericks should have made, if possible... When they made the trade for Kyrie Irving, they should have also made a trade to get Kirsten Wood out of there and bringing in players, uh, sort of like the players they let go of. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. They, they need Dorian Finney-Smith. That's the irony of the whole situation. <laughs> they gave away the piece that would help complement what they have. The piece that probably most helped complement Luka Doncic, which is why they were in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. <laughs> of course, with Jalen Brunson, who's also damn near unguardable. But that same dynamic can come from Kyrie Irving, no problem. Every point that Jalen can score we understand that Kyrie can do the same so it's not like there's any drop off there in fact most would argue it's an upgrade so it's one of those situations where it's like they have structural problems it's not necessarily the core it's not the core the core is fine offensive core they can get 100 points between them if they have to but what does that mean for the rest of the team who else is down there with them are they getting anything out of the most best the best player that they have the third best player which is christian wood another offensive player doesn't play defense problem is for whatever reason they're not utilizing him properly now that to me is a head scratcher because on paper they should be able to get christian wood to score at least 22 points a game no problem no problem and i don't know what has happened there he's not injured he hasn't had any problems staying healthy so i don't know why he's not getting the looks now obviously much has been said about him not being that great of a defensive center which is why you should have traded him when you bring on Kyrie Irving, because now you have no defense in three spots. One of those three is not getting the most out of himself as an offensive player. And now you got Luka Doncic trying to sacrifice for Kyrie Irving. That's not going to make Luka very happy. And I told y'all that on draft on the trade day, rather. That's not going to make him happy. I think he'll like Kyrie as a person. I think he'll learn some things from Kyrie Irving that maybe he wouldn't have learned nowhere else in the world. And he'll be in a he'll be in a different space for knowing Kyrie Irving going forward. However, on the court, nah, them dudes shouldn't be on the floor together. No, no. And I don't think they were supposed to be in theory. A lot of people expect Kyrie Irving to get a bag from the Dallas Mavericks. I'm telling you that I don't think the Dallas Mavericks necessarily have in mind paying Kyrie Irving his salary. Now that doesn't mean 
that I have any inclination of whether or not they want to resign him. I don't know. But what I can tell you is $36 million is not what they're intending to give him because that's what they got him for, to get that off the books. I'm telling you that. Why do I think that? Because on paper, Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic with this core can't win. I mean, with this, with surrounding players, rather, can't win. So if I'm assuming everybody's got their head on straight, and I know what Kyrie Irving can also do for me by acquiring him, because it has a duality to it. One, he could be a player that I acquire, and two, of course, $36 million off the books. So that's what I think it was about. It was about being able to create as much cap space in the offseason to bring themselves whatever combination of stuff that they want to bring themselves. If Kyrie Irving happens to be the piece that they fall in love with, I'm pretty sure they'll try to bring Kai back. But here's the problem. It cannot be at this price because they'll still have this roster. It'll still be some variation of this. Maybe they sharpen up a little bit. Maybe they find a way to trade Christian Wood, but it ain't going to be the value that he should be traded at because they haven't played him up to that, which is a big mistake in the era we're in. I think we're still a bit archaic as it pertains to how we think in that regard. You got to play guys' value up if you want to get rid of them. You got to make sure guys look great if you're trying to get them off your team. It's not something that you should do the opposite in regards to. A lot of times they think, oh, well, a guy sucks. I can't wait to get him off the team. So you bury him on the back of the bench, make it so that nobody wants him, and then try to shop him. <laughs> it's like, no, no, opposite. What you need to do is find the best way to make him look his very best, even if it's not much to it. You carve out portions of, of games or you can showcase this person and make them their best and then get them off your team. Just like we did with Kendrick Nunn. We just sort of understood it after a while. Like, yo, we got to get him out here playing well. And then we can raise his value up and get him out of here. And that's how it worked. As long as we were continuing to bury him, we couldn't get nothing out of him. We couldn't trade him. So that's the problem with the Christian Wood situation. Okay, Christian Wood is a naturally gifted scorer. Double hand dunker all day long. You give him, you give him the ball in a close enough position. And he's scoring the ball, no problem. I don't care what else is wrong with him. Get him the ball eight feet in the paint. And he's dunking on somebody with two hands. That's what's happening. Over and over and over and over and over again. So why Jason Kidd can't get that out of him? It's a head scratcher to me. It's a head scratcher. And you just all you gotta do is slap him next to a Rudy Gobert. Or slap him next to an Anthony Davis. Or slap him next to somebody who's very much defensive, who can hold out the defensive stuff that he can't do. I wouldn't probably say Anthony Davis, but somebody who has a gift for being defensive. Rudy Gobert, uh, Jared Allen, somebody like that. That's who Christian Wood needs as a, as a running mate so that he's not asked to be anything other than a two-hand dunker and somebody who can stretch the floor and shoot the ball a lot. So they're not asking Christian Wood to do anything. He's the third most valuable piece that they have. If they pay up his value, you can probably get a first-round pick for him. That should be the only thing they should be doing for the last nine games. You're not making the playoffs. You're not. That is over with. But what you need to do is turn Christian Wood into a 30-point scorer for the next seven games. That is what the Dallas Mavericks should be doing. Play his value up and continue to develop Hardy and Green. And if you must trade them, trade them because they're also very valuable. But I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to keep them as a part of my core going forward. So for me, if I'm maneuvering around the Dallas Mavericks... This is what we're doing. Dwight Powell, thank you very much. We're gone, Doug. We're not doing that no more. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in the Udonis Haslam, the, the Nick Collins. I don't believe in none of that. If, if we're not contributing to the team, then that is a roster spot that needs to go to a dreamer, somebody that can turn into something. As long as you're sitting there doing nothing and turning into nothing, you're eating away at the overall value of what could be on the floor in your stead. Someone who can play up their value infinitely, maybe. Maybe we find us an Austin Reeves. But I'm sitting here playing around with you? No. Get the hell off my team. Thank you very much. Dwight Powell, you're gone. I'm moving on, yo. We're not doing this. Because I know what keeps teams in the dumps. I know what keeps them from having talented players. It's this type of crap. So get him off the team. Another thing y'all got to do, for sure, is try to figure out what are you going to do with Davis Berton's contract. I don't know if it's still up in the cosmos as it pertains to what you expect him to do. It's a very nice shooter. I think if given enough looks, he can go to work. But for the price tag that he's on, shooters were overpaid a couple years ago. We've talked about it a million times. A lot of those contracts are still in place. Some of them have extensions attached to them. They're awful, all of them. All these shooters' contracts are terrible. 
So what you want to do if you have one of those contracts is to try to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm serious. You want to get rid of these only can shoot guys that are up for like 15, 20 million dollars a year. Hell no. Get them out of here. Those must go. Anyone who has one got to get rid of it. I'm telling you, that's where we at. Because those are highly inflated pieces that keep you from getting better. <laughs> Straight up. So these are things I'm thinking about. Like Dallas need to figure this out, man. Reggie Bullock, solid. Is he overly solid? Future solid? Or can I get him out of here and move Green into his spot at the starting lineup next year? Sounds like a better deal to me. See, this is what I want teams to do. Hardy and Green. Dallas ain't had nothing going on all season long. If y'all really want to know, too, they had nothing going on. The only thing they've had going on all year long was Luka Doncic scoring triple doubles at 30 points a game. All that's beautiful, but he can do that anywhere in the world. Nothing is going on. That's what I'm trying to express people to understand. When a superstar is doing superstar things, I'm not looking at that. He's going to do that on any team in the country. What are they doing around him to make him look good? Well, Dallas, answer, nothing. They're doing nothing. Now, getting Kyrie Irving and getting him off the books at $36 million can put them in a position to do something. And that's what we're hoping we'll see. But them resigning Kyrie Irving, you're going to look like this next year. <laughs> you're going to trade Christian Wood for something marginally better because you ain't play this value up. What are you going to do? You're going to go forward with Green. That's cool. Maybe I'll make the playoffs next year, but you're kind of going to look like this. And I'm telling y'all right there. Right now, I think we're entering a space with Luka Doncic where I think he's starting to think about whether or not he really wants to wear blue for the rest of his career. Legitimately. I think we're there. I watched a little bit of the press conference last night. He was talking about there are things bigger than basketball that may be going on that he don't want to talk about. So prayers out to him and hopefully good things come his way uh, from within the circumstances. But I don't think too much could actually knock him off his game as a player if the things around him going on on the team were fine. Because a gamer like that, in my humble opinion, is going to be able to perform with his talent level and he's going to be happy winning. It's going to take his mind off of off the court stuff. The team sucking is making it worse. The team not being any good is making the off-the-court stuff more visible when he speaks. Whatever it may be. I think, and this 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 is including the unknown of off-the-court stuff. When people go through off-the-court stuff sometimes, who knows what it may be, whatever. But when you come back around to looking around at the stuff in your life after the off-the-court thing happens or when you're going through that off-the-court thing and stuff is awry, it helps you understand that maybe... Going through what you just went through may need to be followed up with a change of scenery. It's just how it goes a lot of the time. Now, if everything's in good place, you come back to your team like John Morant's doing, and you're not thinking about leaving the team. You want to come back to the team because that's where the solace is at. That's where we're winning at. There's good things there. I can't get, wait to get back. But if you got some stuff going on off the court and the team is trash, look, first thing, if, if John's team was garbage <laughs> and he was going through what he's going through, he'd probably want to get out of there this summer. So it's literally that simple. I'm not saying that Luka Doncic is going to request a trade this summer. I don't believe he is. In fact, I don't see that coming. But there is one scenario I'm looking at where I can honestly see him somewhere else. Just just somewhere else next year, yo. Dallas not having him because of all of this. And whatever he may be going through, if he misses the playoffs and he has an offseason to really consider this, I don't know. And then I look at the players that could be on the move. That's also part of it. When I look at LeBron James and my Los Angeles Lakers, <laughs> that's the piece. I don't want to trade Braun for Luka Dodon necessarily. I mean, I don't not want to trade him for Luka Dodon, but I'm just saying I'm not thinking that. I'm not thinking that. I'm not thinking about that. I haven't assessed that in any way. But what I'm telling you is there is an environment for Luka Doncic to move. Jalen Brown is on, he's on the block, basically he's on, he has one or and a half foot out the door. He got his whole torso outside of Boston right now. You know what I mean? These are the type of things like, yo, Luka can move, yo. Luka. A lot of people think he's the next Larry Bird anyway. These, you know, a lot of people think he's the next LeBron James anyway. You think he ain't dreaming of playing, playing for one of the organizations? <laughs> I think Dallas Mavericks are enthralled 
with him succeeding Dirk Nowitzki. With all due respect to Dallas, I don't think that means a damn thing to Louis the Don. At all. That's y'all thing. That ain't his thing. <laughs> he don't care about that. So that's what I want Dallas to understand if they're watching me. Like, yo, y'all got to get good talent around this man and stop playing games with the defensive side of the ball. It's too easy to lay the ball up over you guys. It doesn't matter if it's Williams and Richards or Allen and Mobley. You're still going to have the same problems inside. That's what I was telling my Laker fans yesterday. When we're talking about my team. All we needed to do was get Drummond off the floor for Chicago because Vucevic had got himself thrown out the game. So what did I say? We need to Dallas them. Dallas them. Y'all got your own disrespect attached to you because you were that bad interior because y'all want to do this Dwight Powell thing. That's exactly what it is. I look at y'all like that because y'all doing this with Powell and ain't got no center out there, ain't putting no, you know, ain't doing what you need to do to offset the fact that you can put up 140 points a game. This is what bothers me about them. You know what we said about the Lakers yesterday, same game. Lakers trying to go offense instead of defense, trying to match people bucket for bucket. That is exactly what Dallas needs to do because they can't defend. They cannot defend. So what then offense needs to be able to do is score 170 points in order to get the victories they're looking for. They have to be looking to run the score up, and they're not. They play a slow pace. They don't have the fast break under control. They don't necessarily have anything going on with Christian Wood who could possibly give them the majority of the points that they need in that regard. It's like turn him into the 35-point score. Kyrie Irving's game opens up. Luka Doncic meshes better with Kyrie Irving once they have that third star taking pressure away from both of them. I just think the roster's not constructed very well at all. It's to be continued. This is basically the first half of the season, just like with the Lakers when we had small ball and waiting to make a trade. That's where they are at the second half of the season. That's exactly what they are. They're waiting for Kyrie to come off the book so they could turn Kyrie into the Vanderbilt Beasley, D'Angelo Russell situation. That's exactly what's going on in Dallas. That's exactly what's going on in Dallas. So it's like, for those who are waiting to see if Kyrie's coming back, not at that price. Not at that price. Not for what it is they, they need to be trying to build. Not if they know what they're doing. Just being honest. So certain things are like, all right, man, <laughs> watch Dallas Mavericks. A lot of people are saying, I don't know if the Dallas Mavericks are not. I told y'all to drag. I told y'all trade day. That team wasn't built to win. I told y'all that that day. They weren't. They were constructed to succeed. They're constructed for Kyrie to come off the books. So that's that's the facts. That is what it actually is. Um, they still need to play JaVale McGee, though. They definitely need to do that. Or shut down Kyrie. And Luca for the last seven games. Don't have them running out there no more with this garbage. Don't do that. Fo focus on Green and Hardy and let them boys run for the rest of the season. That's what I think. And Wood. Those should be the guys. And only only two, only three guys need to be scoring because only three guys you can trade for anything. Period. So that's what I got to say about that, man. That is my uh, God's honest take on the Dallas Mavericks. I do not think they're going to make the playoffs. I do not think they make the playing tournament. I think the, the competitive nature of the other teams around them uh, are too much. And their weaknesses are too glaring. Too glaring. I'm not surprised they lost to the Charlotte Hornets. Those centers are there. <laughs> Period. And as long as the NBA doesn't respect size, the teams that don't will be the teams that lose. It's that simple. BDL44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.